Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to the edition of the special session on um, moduli spaces in algebraic geometry and applications during the Mathematical Congress of the Americas. It's a great pleasure today to have uh, Carolina Araujo from IMPA, and she'll talk about Gale duality blow ups and moduli spaces. Carolina, please go ahead. Thank you very much, Marco. So first of all, I would like to thank uh, to thank you, friends, for organizing this session. It's um, it's good to be to stay in touch, and thank you all for being here. So today, I will uh, I would like to report on a, on a recent work about Gale duality blow ups and moduli space and moduli spaces. So this is a joint work with Ana Maria Castravet, Inder Kaur, and Diletta Martinelli. And uh, we are going to be always working over the complex numbers. So uh, before I forget, so I will be, um, I will be just uh, giving you some, some idea of why we are studying this problem and try to give you some background. And please feel free to interrupt me if you have any questions. So let me start with the setup. So this is what we are going. We are interested in. We have, um, say, a set of M very general points in a projective space, and I will explain what very general means. And we will denote. We will consider the blow up of the projective space at these given points, and then that comes with a uh, morphism, a structure morphism to P N. And we would like to discuss uh, to understand this variety X and this map. Uh, to Pn. So first of all, let me say what I mean by a, a very general point. Um, so when first of, let me say what I mean by a general. So when I say that the points are general, I just mean that they are in, in linear uh, general position. So the linear span uh, of any um, if of uh, any say d points is a p d minus one. And he and uh, and well, this this condition um, this is a condition on a finite set of points. And then by very general points, I means that if I do a Cremona transformation centered at any n plus one of these points, then when I look at the new uh, point set, which is given by the center of the blow ups and the images of the other points, then this is still in general position. So this is what I mean by a very general position. In general, we can, if I take any number of points, I can, I can do um, many um, Cremona transformations. So this is in the end is going to be an infinite uh, condition on the, on the set of points, but okay. So this is, I'm always assumed that my points are in very general position. And let me start with a very with the classical setup, which is the case of blow ups of the, the plane P2. And in this case, uh, the situation starts very simple. So if I blow up at most A points, then, um, then res the resulting surface is what we call a del peso surface. So the anti-canonical class is, uh, is ample. And, and then this, this, these surfaces are very well understood. This is a classical topic. And let me just point out that the um, that in as, as soon as I blow up at three points, then actually there is not a unique realization of the surface as a blow up of P2 in M points. So as, as soon as uh, this is the, the, the classical diagram of what happens when I blow up uh, three points, the center of a Cremona transformation, then on my resulting surface, I have here two choices of a structure morphism to P2. So as soon as I blow up three points, then I um, I have um, I have other I have uh, choices for a morphism to P2, a blow up to P2, and then if I blow up a ninth point and start blowing up more, then I get uh, to an inf suddenly to an infinite situation. So if I blow up eight nine points um, in general position in P2, then in then I it's a classical uh, result of Nagata that there are infinitely many minus one curves on this resulting surface, and so here there are infinitely many uh, possible realizations of the surface as a blow up of P2 in uh, M points, and then if I blow up more and more points, well then the situation becomes even wilder. And uh, still, I always have infinitely many minus one curves. So, 
So this is the case, this is the classical uh, setup of the blow up of Pichu. And we are interested in general when, when we blow up higher dimensional uh, projective spaces. And here, the correct notion for to, to distinguish between this infinite and, and, um, and finite geometry is the notion of, uh, of Cox ring and, and uh, Mori dream space. So let me recall this. So this was introduced by Hu Kiel in 2000. So the, let me introduce first the Cox ring of a variety X of such a blow up X. And this is just the a ring formed by all the global sections of all line bundles on X. So this is a, once I fix a, a, a basis for the, the Picard group, this is a, has a natural structure of a, of a ring. And we say that a, uh, the, the blow up X is a more dream space if this Cox ring is finitely generated. And I will I will say a few words about uh, more dream space, more about more dream spaces soon. And so in our setup, if you're interested in blow up of Pn at a certain number of points, then uh, the question is, when is that a Mori dream space? And this is already known. So this is a theorem of uh, Mukai and uh, Kastravet-Tevelep that says exactly which blow ups, which point blow ups of, project, of projective spaces and general points in, in points in general position is a Mori dream space. So the blow up of Pn at this M points is a Mori dream space if and only if you have one of this one of the following uh, situations. So either you are, we are in the case of the plane and you blow up at most eight points, or you, you are in the case of P3 and you blow up at most seven points, or you are in the case of P4, you blow up again at most eight points, or in general for, uh, in, for when n is greater or equal than five, then you can blow up at most n plus three points to get a, um, a more dream space. Okay, so this, so this, for this, uh, so, and now we, what we want to do next is that, okay, now, once you know it's a more dream space, um, can we describe the geometry of this varieties and on those cases? So let me just first uh, remark that later on, I proved with Alex Masarenti that uh, this, that this is also equivalent. So these conditions of being a more dream space uh, or you know this this which gives you this bounds on the on the number of points is equivalent to actually um, saying that X is what we call a log funnel uh, variety. So it's not these are not a, a del peso surface, but this is in a sense a close to close to it. Sorry, sorry, this, Carolina. Uh, the fact that this finite generated implies that this log funnel, or what is the geometry of being finite generated? Okay, let me, thank you for the question. My next slide uh, aims at, at uh, saying something about why, why are more dream space, why is this condition nice? And why is it, why, why is it a finite condition? So let me just go to the, to the next slide. And uh, so let me say something about more dream space, about more dream space. That, that this is again, this was proved by Hu and Kyo. So they proved the following that Whenever you have that X is a more dream space, then all the many of the cones of the visors on X are polyhedral cones. For instance, the cone of Neff divisors, the movable cone. So this is the cone generated by uh, by uh, by movable divisors, divisors without a fixed component, and the cone of effective divisors. These are all polyhedral cones. And even more is true. The cone, Neff cone is uh, finitely generated by, um, by finitely many uh, semi-ample divisors. And moreover, whenever you are in a situation, so this is a very similar to the toric, uh, to the toric situation. In this case, the, the geometry of these varieties are finite. And more precisely, let me there is, one can define a more chamber, what we call a more chamber decomposition on the effective cone. And this is, I will give you an example of this, but this is saying that there are finitely many models, which we call Xi, which are pseudo isomorphic to X. So these are isomorphic to X in co-dimension in co-dimension one. So there are finitely many of these models Xi and, um, and the movable cone of X can be written as a union of the NIF cone of this finitely many models. But the condition so, is, sorry. Yes, condition, go ahead. Not, 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 not. Sorry? 
the condition is not if and only if. I mean, if it's polyedral cones, it doesn't imply that it's more. No. No, doesn't that is doesn't imply. Um, although, okay, yes, no, it's not. It's not the same thing. But uh, what we do is, if you want to have some sort of finiteness, then then this uh, this finite generation is going to assure you that. And then what we want to do next is to, and, and this is what I want to, I will explain this through one example, that uh, this, um, this combinatorial gadget, which is this Mori chamber, the composition of the effective cone, actually this, is, this encodes all the geometry of X. So there are finitely many contractions on, your, on, on a Mori dream space. And these contractions, they, are, they can be encoded in this combinatorial gadget. So let me, give, let me explain this uh, by explaining an example. And this is a very simple example. This is the blow up of P4 in two points. So this is a very simple example of a, uh, a more. So this is one of the blowups that we that is was in my list, and in this case, this is also a toric um, variety. So in this case, the the geometry is very easy to describe combinatorially, and this is it. Let me just fix some notation. So I will denote by H the pullback of a hyperplane section. So here I I, I, I fix one realization, uh, the realization of P P of X as a blow up. I will denote by EIs the exceptional divisor over each of the blown up points. I denote by H sub HI a strict transform of the hyperplane through uh, the point. And also denote by HI12 the strict transform of a hyperplane passing through, uh, through the two points that I blow up. So in this case, the effective cone of X is very easy to describe. So here is the effective cone of x it is generated by so this is a toric uh, this is a, a, um, a toric variety so whenever you are in the toric variety the except the the effective cone is generated by the toric invariant divisors so in this case i have written here five of those and they generate the effective cone also in this case there is a there is a toric recipe for writing down what is the mori chamber decomposition and here in this case i just uh, put in the in the picture here this is the mori chamber decomposition of the effective cone of, of X. So in this case here, let me just say a few, uh, just, just a few words about this picture there. So the NIF cone of X itself, the one in, in green, each, uh, each facet of the cone will correspond to a contraction on X. So for instance, if you contract, so you, if you contract one of the sides of your triangle, you're just contracting the divisor EI to the point PI. And there is also the facet, the, the, there is the, the, the horizontal facet, the, the, ver, the horizontal um, facet of the triangle, the upper part of the triangle corresponds to a, a very interesting contraction, which is the contraction of the strict transform of the line through the two points. So there is a, so the, this, this is a classical, uh, classical um, geometry, one can show that there is a morphism that contracts exactly this the strict transform of the line to a point. So this gives you a very singular variety. And in fact, instead of contracting this curve, one thing that you can do is to flip it or anti-flip it. So you blow up the strict transform of the line, and then the exceptional divisor is going to be a P1 cross P2, and then this P2 can be contracted in the opposite direction. So this is what we call a flip. And so this to go from x to x prime, you just you just do the flip of this uh, the, the strict transform of the line. So this is an example of a Mori dream space of a, a Mori dream space, and in this case the uh, the Mori chamber decomposition of the effective cone, which is the one that I give in this picture, gives you completely is is a way to encode all the geometry of x. So in this case, if I give you this uh, this Mori chamber decomposition of this triangle. It's in, in a sense, and it's, it's the same thing as telling you what is the geometry of this, uh, of this variety. Okay, so this is, a, this, this is a, but this is a good example. Let me say something, maybe I want to say something about this example. If you look, if you look, at, if you look for the, uh, the anti-canonical class of X in this picture, the anti-canonical class, but let me just tell you in the words, I'll make him try to show you where it is. This anti-canonical class is going to be here in the middle of the blue triangle. So what this means is that it's not ample on X, but on X prime, it becomes ample. So we started with a variety. This X is not a blow, it's not a, a funnel variety. 
but after I look at one of its uh, small modification, the X prime, then that one is a fun of variety. X prime that we do not see in this picture is a fun of variety. So we can use uh, the Mori chamber decomposition of X, say, to study this fun of variety X. And I will say something more about this uh, in other cases. Okay, so so this is a, this is the example. And now let me uh, let me go back to the theorem of Mukai and Kastrovet Tevelev. So this is the again the, the, the characterization of the blow-ups of Pn at points in very general position, which are more dream space. So this is the um, so this is the, the the classification. And then the problem then is the following. So for those cases when it is a more dream space. Can we describe the more chamber decomposition of the effective cone in those cases? And this would be, in a sense, the same thing as saying, can you describe all the finite geometry of the more dream spaces in this case? And so this is the problem that I am interested in, and this is what I want to address next. So let's consider, for instance, this uh, case now that it's in pink, the case, uh, the case when n is at least five, and let's blow up as many points as we can. Uh, and still have to still have a Mori dream space that is let's blow up n plus three points in Pn. So this is a blow up of Pn at n plus three points. And in this case, at least I will try to explain you in at least in words, what is the Mori chamber decomposition of the effective cone in this case? And so this was um, so okay. So let me explain this. So in order to explain this, let us fix n plus three points in P1 not in Pn, let us start in the Pn at general points. I will tell you how, more about uh, this point soon. Let me fix this piece to this uh, n plus three points in P1. And now I will introduce uh, parabolic vector bundles on, on this pointed curve, on this pointed P1. So uh, a parabolic vector bundle is a pair consisting of the following data. So first of all, E is a rank two vector bundle on P1. And for each one of the parabolic points pi, uh, I will denote by vi the uh, a one dimensional linear subspace in the fiber uh, over, over, over this point pi. So this is what we call parabolic uh, direction. So this is uh, what a parabolic uh, vector bundle is. And now uh, we would like to consider moduli spaces of such parabolic vector bundles. So in order to uh, have a nice projective moduli space, what we have to do is we have to find some, to fix some stability condition. So the stability condition is given by a choice of weights. So we have a weight vector A and given any weight vector with you give me a weight vector. So uh, these AIs are uh, integers between uh, say uh, rational numbers between zero or real numbers between zero and one. For each choice of a weight vector, I can associate a degree um, a slope and a notion of uh, semi-stability. So the degree of a parabolic vector bundle is just the degree of the vector bundle itself. And then I sum all these weights AIs. And now to consider the uh, degree of a line bundle, a subline bundle of the vector bundle, I don't add all the weights, but the only those weights um, that uh, for which the, the corresponding, if the, if the sub bundle contains the, the parabolic direction. So I just add the AIs for which the VI is contained in, in L. So this is how we define, um, how we define this notion of, uh, of uh, degree in, in this setting. So now once you look at, once you fix this weight vector, then we have these notions and then we can look at the moduli space of semi-stable parabolic vector bundles with respect to this choice of, um, of weights. And then, uh, so this was uh, so this is uh, this was uh, done a, a long time ago. So actually, this was worked out uh, in details by Bauer in 1991. So back then, uh, Bauer. Uh, let me let me just uh, describe the results of uh, Bauer. So first of all, he he described the weight polytope of um, delta. So these are the, the polytope inside the hypercube corresponding to weights for which the, the moduli space is, uh, is non-empty, where you actually have some, something interesting, some interesting moduli space. 
He also described a chamber decomposition in this weight polytope. And by, by a chamber decomposition, here is what I mean. I mean that he, um, he described the composition of this, uh, this weight polytope into chambers, and two points um, are in the same chamber, if and only if they define the same moduli space. So this is what I mean by chamber decomposition. And then he also described all the birational maps between different moduli spaces. So if you, he explained what happens. So we have uh, basically on, on, this, on, the, on this weight polytope, you have, um, you have many walls. And then when you cross from one chamber to the next, uh, by crossing a wall, then the uh, moduli space undergoes some birational um, change. And this, again, this were described by Bauer uh, very explicitly. And in particular, Bauer proved that for a suitable choice of, uh, of weight vector A, then this moduli space of parabolic, uh, semi-stable parabolic vector bundles of degree zero with these weights, this is isomorphic to the blow up of Pn at n plus three points. So this was one, so the, our blow up of Pn at n plus three points is one of these moduli spaces for a suitable choice of weight vector A. Okay, so this was done in the in the 90s. And then let me just let me let me just say a few words about this uh, this weight polytope described by Bauer and the and, and the chamber decomposition. So this is so this is what we call the demi hypercube, and this is a demi hypercube because this is just uh, I look at the uh, vertices of the cube, and then I take the I take just half of the vertices. I take the vertices. Say um, if I look at the the court the coordinates of each vertex is either zero or one, and then I look at the um, the vertexes where the number of coordinates with the uh, entry one is uh, say even, and so this is half of the so basically this is half of the vertices of the hypercube, and so this is why it's called the demi hypercube. So I just put here a few pictures of some. So this is in the case here, of course. If we want to blow up, the n here is at least two. So this is actually a, a, um, a polytope of dimension at least five. But in any case, I've just put a big pictures of say uh, very few very few vertices so that we have an idea. So this is just in, in, in case of dimension, uh, dimension three, or, or this is a representation of the next case and so on. But this is just to say that this is a, this is a very nice uh, polytope. This is a, it's a it uh, it's, has many symmetries and had been very much studied from uh, the point of view of combinatorics. So lots, lots, lots was, lots was were known about this, um, uh, this polytopes. And then, um, and now let me describe the blow up of P n at n plus three points. So in this case here, um, so we have the blow. So on one side we have the blow up of P n at this n plus three points. On the other side we have this demi hypercube described by Bowers that came with a chamber decomposition described by Bauer. And what Mukai observed was that uh, the effective cone of X can be seen as, uh, so the effective cone is just a cone over this demi hypercube. And the more chamber decomposition of the effective cone corresponds precisely to Bauer's chamber decomposition on the demi hypercube. And, and Bauer and, and the, uh, the changes undergone by the moduli spaces when you press from one chamber to another one was exactly the uh, what happens with the different um, models of X, the, the, the small modifications of X. So this is so the, the so basically this is a, the 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 demi hypercube cube is just a projection of the effective cone together with the more chambered composition. Okay, so this was observed by um, by uh, by Mukai. And in fact, with this, this, this description can be made uh, very explicit and so explicit that, so I, uh, together with Cinzia Casagrande, we have used uh, this, uh, this description to actually uh, study um, the, the final model of this blow up when the dimension n is uh, even. So when the dimension is even, um, then the, uh, again, the, <clears throat> The anti-canonical class is not ample on X, but it will be an ample on a small modification. So there is a small modification of this blow up, which is a fun of variety. And by using this uh, Mori chamber decomposition 
of, of the effective cone of X, it's too possible to study um, the geometry of this funnel variety. So this, so this can be actually used um, to study geometry. Okay, so this is what uh, we, what this was already known. And now I would like to, uh, to, to state, so our results is about the next case. So the next case is the blow up of Pn at n plus four points. And in this case, in, as, as soon as n is at least five, this is not a Mori dream space anymore. So the, the geometry here now is no, more, no longer finite, um, but still, and still we are going to, we want to say something about this variety. So let me just point out that this, this as I said, this is not a Mori dream space as long as n is at least five. So if n is four, then, then this is in fact a Mori dream space. So this was in my list of, uh, of uh, the, the blow ups of PN that are more dream spaces. And in fact, it was a study in this case. So this is N equals four and, and M equals to eight. So this is one of the, so one of the extreme, extremal cases in the, in the theorem of Mokai, Kastrovet, Tevelev. And, and in this case, um, it was already known the more chamber, the composition of the effective cone on this case. So this was uh, proposed by Mukai in 2001 and was worked out in details by uh, Casagrande, Codoni, Fanelli in 2019. So they, um, they, this, they give an explicit description of the more chamber decomposition of P4 blown up at this uh, eight points. And they use this to use, again, in this case, there, the, the small there is a small modification, which is a funnel and they use this, uh, this description to investigate and to describe the geometry of this funnel fourfold um, X. So again, this is, um, this is already known. And now I would like, and what we, uh, what we have done recently is to observe that, um, that this construction can be, can be carried out in, uh, in, in, in arbitrary dimension. So let me, um, so let me explain, let me just in, in state um, our main theorem. Uh, but before I do that, let me let me say something about Gale duality. So, so far I, told, I, have, I did not tell you anything about uh, what, what Gale duality is. And in a sense, Gale duality is, uh, was, was hidden in, 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 uh, in the, even in the case of P, Pn blown up at n plus three points. So me, let me explain this. So let me um, say something about Gale duality. So, <clears throat> Okay, so here, okay, so this is uh, what we have what we have used without uh, my telling you. There is this correspondence that if I, I, I was, I wanted to explain the blow up of Pn at n plus three points. And to do that, I used parabolic vector bundles. So I fixed n plus three points on the projective line P1. And so this is what the Gale, this is the simplest uh, manifestation of Gale duality. So this uh, given any n, n plus three points on P1, I can take, I can look at the image of this P1 as a, um, as a, a twisted, um, as a rational normal curve. So embed my P1 inside Pn uh, as a Veronese curve. So I just embed it. And then I look at the image of this P1 up to Pn. So this gives me Tn plus three points in Pn. So this correspondence actually gives me a, a correspondence between n, any n plus three points in P1 up to projective transformation to any n plus three points in Pn up to projective transformation. So this is the this is one the, the, the simplest manifestation of Gale duality, but this actually extends to um, to the following uh, more general situation given any, um, so here I fix uh, two integers R and S, and then this, this, the Gale duality in general gives me a correspondence between the set of R plus S plus two points in PR up to projective transformation and gives me a R plus S plus two points in PS up to projective transformation. Let me explain you very concretely how this, uh, how this transformation, this correspondence goes. So if you give me this, let me let this R plus S plus two points in PR, I can, after change of coordinates, I can write down, I can assume that the first R plus one are the coordinate points in uh, PR. 
And so I, if I write down my vectors uh, in, 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 in coordinates, if I write down the um, my n r r plus s plus two vectors as the, the lines of a matrix. So first I get the identity matrix and then there will be some s plus one times r plus one matrix A. And then to construct the Gale dual points, what I do is normally maybe there, there is a minus sign there missing. So there is, I take minus the transpose of A and then write down the identity in, in, the, in uh, size S plus one. And then in this way, I get exactly my R plus S plus two points in, um, in P. Yes. So this is the so this is a it's really linear algebra that gives you points in a projective space and gives me a sets of points in another projective space. So this this Gale duality has been it's, it's, it has very interesting um, geometry. And when I told you that the blow up of P n at n plus three points is a modelized space of uh, parabolic vector bundles on P one, this was corresponding. You I use this Gale duality uh, in um, hidden there. Okay, so let me, I'm getting to the end, end of my talk. So let me land in my last slide. Let, I would like to, uh, to state um, our, our main theorem and then uh, and, and maybe I can say something about how, how the proof goes. So it, we, are, we are interested in the case now, we are considering n plus four points in a projective space Pn in very general position. And then the first thing that I do is I take its Gale dual points. So in this context, the, the, the Gill dual points is, uh, is going to give me n plus four points in P2 on the, on, on the plane. And I am interested in describing the blow up of Pn at this n plus four points. And I will use the surface uh, obtained by, by uh, Gill duality to describe this, this, uh, this blow up X. So let me denote by S the blow up of P2 at the corresponding Gale dual points. So I get n plus four points in P2, and now I have a rational surface, which is the blow up of P2 at this n plus four points. Now on the surface, we will fix some magical invariants. So these are this uh, magical invariants. So I will fix, um, so I want to look at the modelized spaces of vector bundles on S. So in order to do so, we have to fix, uh, we have to fix the rank and the churn, the churn classes. So in this case, these are the, the magical choices. I fix the rank to the first churn class of uh, the, the, the bundle, which is going to be the anti-canonical class of the surface. And I fix the second churn character to be two. So with this uh, fixed uh, invariance, then I will consider for every ample line bundle on the surface S, I can consider the modelized space of L semi-stable locally free sheaves with this fixed invariance. And so the general theory tells me that if I vary the polarization L, then the stability condition, so I'm here using the Giesecker uh, stability, so the stability condition is going to change and then the modelized space is also going to change. And then what we have proved is the following. And so we proved that for um, a suitable choice of polarization L on S, then our, bl our the, the blow up that we are interested in, the blow up of Pn at this n plus four points is isomorphic to the modelized space of um, semi-stable locally free sheaves on the Gale dual surface with, um, with this fixed um, invariance. And so this, in a sense, is a, um, a geometric uh, manifestation of Gale duality in, in this context. OK, so this is what I wanted to, to tell you. So thank you so much for your attention. Thank you very much, Carolina. Are there any questions or comments? I have a quick question. Yes, so yes. I'm assuming that in all this, when you're, I, I, I don't recall if you put a condition on your, on your end, you're getting with enough blow ups, an elliptic surface. Uh huh. If I remember correctly, I think, is it like when you have N points or something like that? And then is, 
is the result of your theorem a little bit like uh, related to what you obtain using Fourier Mukai or just these uh, the fact that on certain um, um, elliptic surfaces the moduli spaces again you know uh, with certain invariants again uh, in an elliptic surface um let's see my question is a bit vague but you know it just uh Mm -hmm. Okay, so okay, I I I, I do not know, so I I do not uh, I don't have I have not thought about this, but it's but something that it, it we have not yet explored so much the uh, the geometry of the surface of so sure if sure we have so this is a general case for any any number of points. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, we have looked at what happens in, in some, for instance, when n is uh, when n is five. So this is the first case when we have something. So when, as I said, when when n was four, so this was studied. So in this case, you are you are on a del peso surface, and the, and this correspondence was used before. Uh, and in in the case of nine points, we have uh, we still have a, a very a very good description of this surface, but. It, in general, we have not explored it that much, but it is an interesting question to, for some, if, if you fix the surface. Um, okay, well, thank you for the question. I will, I, I have to think more about this. I haven't, then, I, I haven't thought about this. Thank this you, very, it's very interesting. And I'll think of a better way to, to, uh, to word my question, <laughs> but thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Hook, Sandra. Um, so we have two minutes for the next talk. So perhaps we can uh, have more questions to Carolina via email or through the chat. Okay. Thank you. Uh, let's thank Carolina again for her presentation.